Today, you are going to explain that food provides animals with the materials they need for growth and body repair and the energy they need for motion and to maintain body warmth. So you're going to explain how animals, how the food animals eat provides them with what they need. Let's do this, scientists. Hey there, scientists. I am Mr. Steyer, and this is Mr. Steyer's Classroom. Today, you are going to explain that food provides animals with the things that they need. I know that we've been talking about plants in the past, and now we're going to take the knowledge we have about plants, and we're going to transition it over to things that we're going to learn here about animals. Then we're going to connect it all together. So when you are thinking about why animals need food, and when you are thinking about what animals need, let's start by just you reflecting on pets that you know either that you have or someone you know has. So what are the things that pets need? And specifically, if we talk about food, why do you think your pet needs food? And what do you feed your pet? Does the package of pet food make any claims about how the food will help the animal? Have you seen any commercials about how the food is going to specifically help the animal out or why this food is better than this food over here? Well, we're going to start to think here on why animals need food and why different food acts differently for different animals. Now, at this point, you know the lesson today is going to be about why animals need food. And at this point, you know we are talking about how does food affect animals. And I know instantaneously you're going to say it gives them energy. And that's true. But is there more to it? Is there more to how food can help an animal out? So that's what we're going to look at here today, is how food can help an animal out. So if we look at our monkey here, and if we look at our elephant, um, we can see that they're both eating food. And we're asking ourselves, the gray langur monkey, langur monkey gets the energy it needs from the fruit it eats. Okay, so we have our monkey getting the the energy it needs from the food it eats. And we just said that. We knew that animals were going to get energy from the food they, they ate. But is there more to it? Now let's look at this elephant here. So this elephant here, what actions is this elephant taking to get its food? It may have actually traveled to get its food here. It's clearly reaching up, it's stretching, it's using its trunk. And you can recall back to some of those things you learned in fourth grade about the internal and external structures of an elephant and how those can relate to what you're seeing in this image today. So we can see here that this elephant is pulling leaves off of the acacia tree. What is the elephant going to get from these acacia leaves? Well, probably energy just like the monkey did. But let's see if there's more here that we can learn. It's a misty morning in the Ngorogoro crater of Tanzania. An African elephant has already walked several miles to reach a grove of acacia trees. Now the elephant reaches up with its long trunk and pulls the leaves off of the tree to its mouth. The elephant will use its wide, flat teeth to grind the tough leaves. Then it will swallow the leaves and digest its breakfast. The elephant needs to eat the acacia leaves to get energy, but it must also use energy to move to get its food. So here we have a balance where the elephant is getting its energy from the tree, and it's using that energy to move to a new tree to get food. Like the elephant, 
All animals need to eat food. Food provides animals with the materials they need to grow larger and repair their bodies. Food also provides animals with the energy they need for motion and to carry out other life functions such as digestion. Warm-blooded animals, such as mammals and birds, use the energy in food to keep their bodies warm. So not only is this elephant getting the energy it needs from this food, but this food is also helping to keep this elephant warm. And for any of you who have ever spent any time outside in the winter, you know how important eating food in the winter is because the food helps to keep your body warm when it's cold. So not only does it give you the energy you need to survive, but it keeps your body warm and food and proper nutrition can help to repair some of the injuries that your body is feeling. So this food does more than just give us energy. The materials in the food might be used to grow larger, to repair the bodies. The elephant is going to get larger from eating these acacia trees. Animals are going to be able to move further because they have the energy from the food so that they can get more food and maybe get to a safer place. And animals use food to help, warm-blooded animals use food to help keep their bodies a regulated temperature. So we see the heading here, it says why animals need food, and we have read the information so we know what's going on. Can we determine what the main idea, what the main topic, the main thing that we are supposed to learn here is? What is the main idea? As you go forward in today's work, that is the things that, those are some of the things you're thinking about is what is the main idea of this lesson of why animals need food? Can you explain how food provides animals with materials for growth, for body repair, energy and needs for motion, and how food can help an animal maintain its body warmth? And then going further, you're going to start thinking about what are other animals that you can think of and how are they using food in order to get what they need to survive? And then even beyond that, you're going to be working to infer today and answer a question about a bird, which is warm-blooded, and a frog, which is cold-blooded, and how they might need and use food differently depending on if it's a warm-blooded or a cold-blooded animal. So these are things that we're trying to learn and figure out from this information.